Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, a while ago, I reviewed a portable antenna tuner called the AT100M, which in all honesty is a very good portable tuner. Well, this is the AT100M Pro. While it looks the same, it does have some subtle differences, which actually improves the performance. Now we'll take a look at a comparison chart in a moment, but first let's take a look at what's in the box. So included is a nice little configuration guide, which covers all of the features of this ATU and how to use them. Each of these functions are altered within the menu system on the tuner itself, and some of these are extremely useful. The tune auto feature allows the tuner to be set to auto tune when it detects an SWR of a certain level which is also configurable in the menu. The starting tune voltage can also be adjusted to suit extremely low QRP radios with less than 100 milliwatt output. This ATU can also be used as a power meter as well as an SWR meter, and these can be calibrated if you find them not correct. However, they will be calibrated at factory, but it does give you that option to change it if you need to. Now another feature of this ATU is that it has a built-in CW tone generator, which is being advertised as a Morse code exerciser. Now this can be triggered using a Morse key connected to the 3.5 mm socket on the rear of the tuner. Now that's a slightly strange feature to have in a tuner, in my opinion. Now tell me in the comments below, what do you think about having this feature in an ATU? Is it something you can see yourself using? Now also included is a small Allen key, along with a USB-C cable, which is used for charging the internal 3300 mAh battery. There are also four rubber feet, which can be attached to the bottom of the ATU case. Perfect if you're using this at home on a desk, these just stop it from sliding around. Now it's nice to see that products within the box are wrapped very well, which means you should receive the product in the condition it left the factory. Removing this tape from the front panel reveals the on and off button, along with a small OLED screen and a tune button. Now on the rear, we have two SO239 sockets, one to connect to your antenna and the other to connect to your transceiver. You'll notice the USB-C charging port just above the 3.5 mm socket, which as mentioned earlier, can be used to attach a Morse key for CW training. The beep actually comes from the internal buzzer when used. Now powering on the tuner using the front power button, the startup screen shows the firmware version, current battery voltage, and then a percentage value, which I can only presume is the battery charge level. Now, if you tap the tune button, the menu will cycle through its available pages, firstly showing SWR and forward power as a bar graph, and then as number digits. There are also two graphs which plot in real time when you're transmitting. These plot either the SWR or the forward power. Now, I guess this could be useful if you want to monitor the SWR, maybe if your antenna is moving around in the wind or even if you want to check it for a fault. However, the internal buzzer will sound if the SWR goes above a preset level, which is great if your radio doesn't have the internal high SWR protection. You just need to make sure that you de-key when you hear that buzzer. Now the configuration menu can be accessed by holding down the tune button until it appears. You can then cycle through the different options by tapping the tune button again and then holding down to enter the selected option. As mentioned earlier, you do get four rubber feet which you can stick on if you need them. Not sure how long they will stay in place, but if you're just using it on the desk, then I guess it shouldn't move around too much. Having the tuner set to auto tune when it detects an SWR above a preset level is kind of handy. It means that you don't even have to touch the tuner at all while in operation. The best thing to do would be to set your radio to a low consistent carrier, maybe like five watts on FM or AM, key the mic and let the tuner perform its tune. Then you can switch back to your desired mode. So here I'm gonna go through some of the different bands using one of my radios. Now I am connected to an NFED half wave antenna, which is resonant on quite a few bands. However, the band edges are slightly high. So let's see if this tuner can bring that tune down. Now I know that on 80 meters, the band edges are quite bad. And that's because on the NFED half wave that I have, it has a very narrow bandwidth for 80 meters. 
So here we can see that it's tuning quite well and it's brought it down to just over one. Now earlier I mentioned about the graphs and uh, how it plots the SWR in real time. As you can see here, it's just consistently staying at 1.03405. So it's kind of working. Also, you can plot the forward power. Now here I'm in AM, so it should be a consistent. But obviously, if you switch to SSB, then that will change. You might not see drastic changes as the sampling seems to be quite slow. Now my NFED half wave on 40 meters is actually pretty resonant across the whole band, so the tuner's not going to really do much here. Now on 10 megahertz, the antenna's not really tuned, but the AT100M Pro seemed to tune it no problem. Now one of the things you will notice is that the tuning is extremely quick. Now the AT100M Pro does have more storage in terms of groups than the AT100M which means it should be, in theory, a faster recall for frequencies that you've used before. So let's have a look at this comparison chart between the AT100M and the AT100M Pro. Now, there's quite a lot of similarities, but the ones in red on the right-hand side show the differences. So the automatic memory channel has been improved from 29 groups up to 60 groups, and the maximum combined inductance value has changed from 8.41 microhenry to 17.21 microhenry. The maximum combined capacitance value has changed from 1869 picofarad to 3869 picofarad. So with these values higher on the pro version, in theory means that it should have a wider range of tune, or in other words, can support a higher SWR. Now further down the chart, it mentions manual tuning mode. Now the AT100M didn't support that, but the AT100M Pro can be manually tuned, changing the inductance and capacitance from the menu directly. Now under the product performance section, it shows that it's slightly larger and it also weighs around 30 grams more, which is pretty negligible if you're gonna be putting it in a backpack. I don't think you're really gonna be noticing that much. We still have the same amount of charging time, which is down at about four hours, and also the standby time and tuning duration is still from 150 to 200 hours and 10 to 25 hours, and that's active one to three relays. So I think on a single charge would definitely cover you for a weekend, if not longer. Obviously it depends on how often you're gonna change frequency or how often you're gonna to need to use the tuner. Anyway guys, that's the AT100M Pro. Let me know if you've already got the AT100M and if you think that you might change or upgrade to the AT100M Pro, or if you're already looking for a portable antenna tuner, which is battery powered, then this would probably be the one for you. The one thing that I haven't mentioned so far is the usable power levels. Now from 1.8 megahertz up to 18 megahertz, we're looking at around 50 watt maximum when using digital modes or FM and AM, but it will support the full 100 watts. Now, when we jump from 18 megahertz up to 30 megahertz, i.e. 17 meters, up to 10 meters, SSB and CW is only supported up to 50 watts, and that's including AM and FM and FTA or any other digital modes. So it doesn't cover 100 watts across the whole of the HF band, but from 17 meters upwards, you would just need to reduce your power to around 50 watts. So something to bear in mind. Anyway guys, there we go, that's the AT100M Pro. Hope you enjoyed the video and the short overview of this little portable ATU. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.